reporting for TTN HD Production Live, here with producer Butch Kaplan. What inspired you to get into the business? I would say that in a very short period of time, I saw three movies sort of back to back, and they were The Deer Hunter, Apocalypse Now, and Annie Hall. And it occurred to me that it wasn't just actors somebody had to work on that and it looked like a lot of fun and that's why I decided to go into the movie business I thought that if I could come close to anything close to those films that I would have achieved a lot in this world do you think you have come close to those films I do actually <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little happy about that yeah I think so I think that um, I think that the notebook was an extraordinary film and I think that it, it will continue to resonate for for a long, long time. Um, I think that um, Alpha Dog was an excellent movie that also will at least make people think a little bit. And um, and then uh, and John Q is another film that, that I did that I was I'm very proud of and I'm, I'm very excited about. What was it like working with two Canadian actors on The Notebook? It was great. It was really amazing. Um, both Ryan and Rachel came down about five weeks before we started filming so that they could start to acclimate themselves to their environment and learn all about their parts. Um, Ryan went to work in a wood shop as a, with a carpenter that we found that was going to teach him and he interned with him. Uh, then he learned how to row boats. Um, Rachel took piano lessons, took dance lessons. They both worked with dialect coaches. Um, and by the time we were ready to film, you would never know that they were from Ontario. You would have sworn they were both from the low country and had grown up their entire lives in South Carolina. It was really fabulous. We had a great time. While you were shooting the film, did you think it would be so wonderful? Yes, actually, I, I thought it was going to be wonderful when, when I read the script. And, and then after I read the script, I went back to the source material and read the book. And I just thought to myself, this is a phenomenal story. This is a fantastic story about, you know, what love can mean. And um, yes, actually, I thought that, I, I remember saying to Nick, I said, this movie's a whodunit, <laughs> but it's the most romantic whodunit ever. So yeah, I thought it was, I, I did. I actually thought it was gonna be a, a very, very popular film. What have you learned about yourself through being in the business? Be disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and be persistent. Has it been what you expected it to be? Um, no. <laughs> no, it was, it's very different than, I think that the reality of what I do on, on film, which is basically line production, um, is very different from what one would expect, and uh, it's it's much more of a uh, um, a labor-intensive job with long, long hours. What are the basics of line producing for someone who may not know? Um, I think the best analogy that I've come up with is that the line producer is the general contractor. He's in charge of ordering the cranes that's going to dig the hole that the cement will be poured in to make the foundation that will hire the electricians and the plumbers that will install the sheetrock and build this magnificent edifice all of in less than three months. But, and then take it all down. Um, but he, he's that person who organizes all of that work. Do you find it to be stressful? I am told that it is stressful and I will concur on occasion it is. <laughs> but but there are we but we actually it's interesting you know over the years I think that we've learned um, that it can be dangerous um, and so we have found methods to to calm ourselves and to find ways to de-stress and to lower the level of anxiety and when I say we I mean even the the guilds and the unions recognize the fact that this is a, a tough job that actually has places a lot of physical demands on, on a body and so that um, they have found ways to counteract that actually. What kinds of ways do you counteract that? Are there special te techniques? Do you do yoga? 
Uh, you know, funny you should ask. I actually had, did take up yoga recently. There's something called the um, the five Tibetan rites, and I do them every morning. And then the other thing that you find is that at some point you need to take a two-minute break, walk away, and not long, 120 seconds, but just clear your mind for a second, meditate on the good parts, and, and then come back to it. But take a break. Try and get one in the middle of the day. Yeah, that works a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of projects are you hoping to do in the future? Is there anything in particular? Um, yes, there's a, uh, a television show that I've been developing that um, I want to shoot in Europe that um, centers on you know, Interpol catching well-known criminals and arms dealers and terrorists, and that's one project. There's a project that um, I'm interested in doing again with uh, Cassavetes, the director that I've worked with a few times now, that um, I'm hoping will go this year, and um, and then some other, one other item that I'm developing on my own that I'm hoping will turn into a, a series of films. But that I'm still premature on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and what advice would you give to upcoming filmmakers? Be persistent. Stick with it. And um, and never stop asking, never stop ever asking, because the answer to the unasked question is no. No, you have already. You can always turn it into a yes, but you got to ask first. And when I say ask, I mean ask about anything. Absolutely, there's nothing that is um, sacrosanct as far as I'm concerned. Ask anything. Thank you so much, Butch, and best of luck with your upcoming projects. Thank you, and. Good luck to you, too. <laughs> Thanks. I'm Katie Allman, reporting for TTNHD Production Live. Oh, oh, oh.